This is project 10 in Hacking with Swift. You're going to make a fun, simple and actually useful project that will help you remember names or faces of people you've met. If you're a frequent traveller to conferences or perhaps just very bad at putting names to faces, this project is perfect for you. You will, of course, be learning lots along the way, not least UI Collection View Controller, not least UI Image Picker Controller, but also NSU UID. You'll also meet your old friends, CA Layer, UI Alert Controller, NS Data, and Closures. But most of all, you will learn how to make your own data type from scratch for the very first time. For more information, go to the website hackingwithswift.com, where you can buy the series as books or videos starting from just $3 each. Your donations do help me make more videos like this. Please check it out. Uh, alternatively, find me on Twitter. I am at Two Straws. And if I have spare time and you have a problem, follow me, get in touch. I'll do my best to help you. So please go ahead and launch Xcode. Then choose Create a New Xcode Project and go for Single View Application under iOS Application. Then click Next. Name it Project 10. For devices, I don't mind what you choose. You can choose uh, any of them or Universal. doesn't really matter. It's all the same. Make sure there is no call data on. Boo-hoo. Then press Next. That should all at this point be second nature to you because you are a Swift veteran, right? Yeah, more or less. Press Create. Uh, yes, always allow for me. Just ask me questions. And I will test out uh, my app using iPad 2. Genuine, uh, generally, I do recommend not using iPad Air or Retina for doing iPad testing because it is substantially slow, slower. Choose iPad 2. And press Play to build and run. It will install it inside the iOS simulator. Fire it up and show me a very large white screen. Look at that. That is just beautiful. Fantastic. Okay. We are going to go ahead and open up Interface Builder and get our UI moving. So please select main.storyboard to launch uh, Interface Builder. And we want to start off by using our normal little, little embed in navigation controller thing. So select the view controller here and go to editor embed in navigation controller. There we go. And it's arranged it terribly naturally. Thank you, Interface Builder. Much nicer. So on the left, navigation controller. On the right, our view controller. Now, we want to embed a new UI kit control in here. It's called a collection view. So type into the search box, it's collection. And you'll see a few things appearing. Indeed, four things. Here they are. A collection view controller, a collection view, collection view cell, and collection reusable view. Please choose collection view, not collection view controller. They are different things. If you choose the wrong one, it will not work. So with that selected, drag it in there. Let it occupy the full screen. Let it snap in until you see the bars appearing. You can just about see them faintly on my screen. Then let go, and it will occupy the full screen automatically. Now what we're going to do is uh, use the size inspector, this one here, to modify the size of each cell. So a collection view, as you can see, arranges things in a grid. It, but it works behind the scenes very, very much like a table view. So all the code we've been using for table view will really come in handy here. You might find it actually almost identical. So our cell size, how big should items in our grid be? For width, enter 140. And for height, enter 180. And this here, you see the square moving. That's our example cell we can work with. It's a prototype cell, just like we had in the table view. Then for section insets here, you'll see it top, bottom, left, and right. Please set each of those to be 10. So 10 top, 10 bottom, 10 left, 10 right. So it just indents the cells from the edges very nicely. So what we're going to do is uh, use the assistant editor to create an outlet for the collection view so we can reference it in code later. Just, just for a moment. So press assistant editor mode to get up the UI view controller code down here. And then uh, control drag from the collection view down into our code and then let go of the mouse button. Choose outlet, yes, UI collection view, awesome. Just call it collection view. There's only one of them, it's nice and straightforward. And press connect. Fantastic. That's our collection view more or less done. Go back to uh, regular editor so we can focus on the actual design of our cells. 
You'll see the cell here, this is our prototype cell here. We can customize that to do more than what it is right now. It's just an empty square right now. Uh, for example, you might remember in um, Project 7 we had uh, subtitles. It was the uh, petition viewer project for White House stuff. And we use a subtitle view for table view cells. So we can have a, t a title and a subtitle in cells. We're going to customize this one too. Um, so you can see we've got this large uh, black colored collection view here. Then we've got uh, this collection view cell inside it, which is our uh, prototype cell. And we're going to use this to make it look obviously a bit nicer than it looks right now. Firstly, go to the attribute inspector, then change background from default. It's like a, a white box with a little red one pixel line going through it. That's Apple's way of saying transparent for some reason. Uh, change it from transparent to just white, white color like that. It's got a nice white background in there. Then inside this, we want to add some stuff. So we're going to give this uh, an image view. There we go, image view. Drop it in the cell. Uh, now we can type in the exact sizes for this image view so it all looks great. So for uh, X, enter 10, Y, 10, width 120, and height 120. So you get a square image. Oops, height uh, Y, 10, like that. <clears throat> A square image indented 10 pixels or 10 points, sorry, around the left, top, and right. We'll use that to show pictures of people's faces. Beneath that, we'll insert a label. So search for label and drag that in and give it, uh, let's say, x10, y134 is good, uh, width 120, so it goes all the way under the picture, and height 40 should just about fit in. There we go. So to give it a bit more style, back to the uh, attribute inspector here and change the font from generic System 17, which is Helvetica Neue, which is just fine in a lot of places, but it gets tedious after a while. <clears throat> Let's change to a custom font. And we're going to use the much bemoaned marker felt font. This is Apple's traditional scribble font. Uh, and for style, choose thin. And then size, let's put it down just a little bit to 16. Fantastic. So it fits a lot of text in there. But we should center it. So the name will be a picture of some guy, Bob, and the name beneath it, Bob. That's what it's going to look like. As you can see, there's enough space here for two lines. You know, if I type in more text, label, label, oops, label, 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 boom. Uh, I want it to go across two lines rather than one. And you get that. Looks perfect. Fantastic. Let's put that back to being label again. And that is uh, how our cell is going to look. It'll stamp across the way. Now, cell, 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 cell. That, so far, has been fairly usual storyboard work. I've done this kind of thing before many times now. You are a pro at storyboards all being well. But we're now going to do something we've never done before, which is to assign a delegate from a storyboard and then create a custom class for our cell. So the first thing is simple. You want to uh, select the collection view, either here on the left or here, and then control drag from there up to where it says view controller here. Then let go, and you'll be asked what kind of connection to make. Please choose uh, delegate. And now control drag again from the collection view to con view controller. Oops, from collection view to view controller. There we go and choose data source and that in total means that we've now made our view controller the data source and the delegate for our collection view controller meaning that when it wants to know how many items there are in there or hey something's been tapped it will ask our view controller what to do we'll need to return to that shortly now for the uh, slightly harder part which is creating a custom class for our collection view cell so this is right now is a standard UI collection view cell. It doesn't do anything important. And we need to make it uh, be able to manipulate the image view and the label. Now, the, the, the shortcut way, like I'd, I'd do it in the past because we're learning, is to give this a tag like 1001 and give this another tag like 1002 and then load it out of the view that way. And you can do it that way. It's perfectly fine to do it that way. Wouldn't recommend it to do it that way, but you can do it that way. This time we're going to do it the air quotes, proper air quotes way, uh, which is to create a class. So follow this carefully. You'll need to do this quite a lot later on. We need to add a new file 
to our project. So you want to go up here and select project 10, this yellow folder, then right click on it and choose new file. Now go to uh, from iOS source, please choose Cocoa Touch class and press next. For subclass of, you'll want to enter UI collection view cell. And for name, we're going to call it person cell, like that, person cell. Press next, uh, save it there, yes, fine, create. So it creates this file person cell dot swift. It doesn't do very much in there, but we need to make it uh, represent the image and the label inside our uh, project. Now there are a few ways you can do this, but we're gonna do it kind of by hand here because it's a little bit easier and it shows you a bit more of Interface Builder, quite frankly. Uh, we're gonna add our two properties in here by hand. So the syntax is at IB outlet, weak var image view, colon UI image view, exclamation mark. And then again, at IB outlet, weak var name, UI label, exclamation mark. This is exactly the kind of code that is being created for us by control dragging from interface builder into code. There is no uh, circle here yet. We haven't made the connection just yet. We're gonna do that now. So this creates space for two outlets. And again, this keyword's important because interface builder will detect that, pick up on it, and show it inside itself, as you'll see in just a second. So go back to main.storyboard and select your collection view cell. Now, this is where it gets interesting because this is just a general UI collection view cell. And you can see that by going to the identity inspector, the identity inspector even. Uh, here written in very, very faint text, it says UI collection view cell. We want that not to be a standard built-in UI collection view cell. We want it to be a person cell. And that's as simple as choosing the drop down arrow and selecting person cell. So that now, when it's created, will be created using our custom subclass of UI collection view cell, which is called person cell. And it means we can uh, connect things to it. We can connect its outlets, those two we just made. Using up here, this is the, this is the outlets inspector. You can click on that and it'll say, well, I, now I know it's a person cell. I can say it's, well, it's got an imagery property and a name property. These are things declared as IB outlets. And you can click and drag from here, or click and drag, sorry, just not control drag, click and drag from here. I can click on uh, image view, drag the blue line to that thing. That's my image view. My name is that, like that. So that connects our custom class up to the uh, collection view cell in Interface Builder. So this is kind of doing it in the reverse. Both ways are totally valid, you know, whatever works best for you. I've shown you both ways now, so please, by all means, do what works best for you. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is make sure this collection view uh, pins itself to the, all the edges of our view as it resizes. So we'll use the pin menu again. That's the second button down here. Uh, we used it before. So deselect constraint to margins, then press one, two, three, four on the four red lines and click add four constraints. And that means it will resize correctly. You can run it now, but there isn't really much to see because we haven't done any code behind this yet and uh, it will not work because we've promised we are the delegate, we are the data source for this uh, collection view. We haven't done the actual legwork yet. So in project, uh, what was it, four I think it was, uh, we made ourselves the delegate of a web view so we could find out about navigation actions. And as soon as we did that, as soon as we said, you know, uh, our we are the web view's navigation delegate, uh, Swift started pointing out errors saying, well, you don't, uh, you, you don't conform to the protocol, that's not allowed. Um, and we had to conform to the protocol to make that work. That has not happened here. Uh, we have what, one warning. Yeah, it's whinging, fine. Oh, it's, oh, I can see why it's whinging. It's okay, it's whinging because I have forgotten to give this thing a uh, reuse identifier, which is my mistake. Um, you want to uh, select the person cell here then go to the attribute inspector and then give it a name. I'll just call mine cell. Sorry, the, we have at this point, there we go. We have no warnings. So it's not complaining to us at all. Even though we've said we are the delegate and the data source of this collection view, it's not warning us at all. 
if you run it, let's do that now. Let's press play. Ba -ba -da, build the code, run the code, bang, crash straight away. Why? Because I didn't see a number of items in section sent to uh, our instance of uh, the view controller here. So it's it. Even though we are a delegate and data source, it's not warning us we haven't properly fulfilled the requirements. That's because it does not scan interface builder to see connections. It looks at your code only. So what we should, what we should do really is tell Swift that we are in fact the uh, data source and delegate for the collection view by saying in the uh, view control .swift file, UI collection view data source comma UI collection view delegate like that and now you will see uh, complaints build failed it does not correctly conform now when we had the WK navigation delegate in project 4 uh, it was all optional all the methods inside the protocol were optional meaning that we're, all we have to do is say yes we conform and that was good enough with UI collection view data source that is not the case you must have certain methods implemented in order to fully conform to the protocol Specifically, you must respond to how many items are there in a section and what does each item look like. So let's go ahead and do that now. We can, uh, using code completion, you can write collection view. There's our code completion working. And scroll down until you find number of items in section. So I'll type in return 10. There are 10 items in my section, which is fine. And then collection view cell for item at index path now it's not called cell for row at index path because rows don't exist in collection views it's all about items uh, because of course there can be four things on the same row visually um, and once you're inside the method it, it, it works similarly to, to table view we're going to say uh, let cell equals collection view dot dq reusable cell with reuse identifier not this one this one identifier we just call it cell and for index path we'll pass in the index path we were given like that uh, we do need to typecast it as person cell just like we would do with uh, a table view and then return it return that back boom okay let's run the code now see if that's any better Fantastic, that's our code now running. And you can see it animates beautifully uh, the collection view, so things slide around and fade in and out as you rotate the device. Very, very nice. It's a lovely control for doing animations. So just to, to recap what we've done, we've said we are the delegate and data source for a collection view. It was crashing because these two methods were not implemented, and now they are. So we've got 10 items, and we return for each one of them the default cell we declared. We're going to take it a little bit further because we want to import photos from the user's photograph library and use those uh, inside our app. So they can literally go to a conference, snap someone's face, and then say, this was Jane uh, in the app. That's the point of the app. So we're going to go to uh, view did load and add uh, a navigation bar left bar button item. So that's navigation item dot left bar button item equals UI bar button item. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, the system item dot add, but you can choose whatever makes you happy. Target self and selector, we'll call it add new person like that. So we'll call the add new person method, which is not yet written. Let's do that now. So let's go down here, find some space. You can say func add new person. And we're going to introduce a new UI kit control called a UI image picker controller. This is a really powerful tool that lets you grab things from the photo library. And it even asks users for permission beforehand as well. So it's very, very, very flexible. Um, so we're going to say uh, let picker equals UI image picker controller, parentheses, picker dot allows editing equals true so users can crop the picture and move it around and such then picker dot delegate equals self and finally present view controller picker animated true completion nil now it's erroring here assigning a delegate this is just like 
assigning a delegate for the web view. It doesn't like it because we don't conform to the correct protocols. We must conform, conform to two, in fact, not only the UI image picker controller delegate, which is important, but also the UI navigation controller delegate. Now, the first of these is really useful. It tells us when the user selected a picture or canceled the picker. So we need the first one. The second one really is quite pointless, honestly. Um, we're not going to use it at all here, but we must still conform to it. So go ahead to the top here, and after these two, let's add another one, which is the UI image picker controller delegate. And another one the UI navigation controller delegate. That's it. So those two extra de protocols in there. Oops, crazy. So you can see it, there we go. There's lots of uh, protocols being conformed to now. And the code error has gone away, which is fantastic. With that in place, it's now okay to uh, access users' pictures. If I press uh, Command R to run the program back, uh, there's my button. I can press the plus sign it will say, do you want to allow Project 10 to read the photographs? Yes, I do. I want to choose this one. These are built-in iOS pictures. Then choose that one. I can go ahead and move it and scale it and such. You know, I might zoom into a small amount and then press use. But nothing's happened, of course. We're not doing anything with the code. Uh, we need to handle the code coming back to us saying, hey, I have got a picture here. What do you want to do? Because we know exactly what we want to do. We want to pull out the image that was returned to us. We want to generate a unique file name for it. We want to write it out as a JPEG and then dismiss the view controller. So we need to make that happen. And in order to do that, you need to learn a few new things, I'm afraid. One is the way Apple sends data sometimes because Apple often sends data using a dictionary of, of keys and values and you have to know the right keys to pull out the right values. This can be annoying. So in our case, the uh, dictionary will contain uh, one of two keys, nearly always the first, but in this case, well, I'll show you both. Uh, one is called UI Image Picker Controller Edited Image. That will contain the UI image that was edited by the user. Or UI Image Picker Controller Original Image, i.e. the original image. Now, realistically, it should only ever be the former, but we'll, we'll have support for both so you can change your mind later. Now, the problem is we don't know if these things exist as UI images. So we can't just extract them into images. They might not exist or that we have problems. So we're going to use a special method of typecasting, an optional typecast, along with if let syntax. And using that method, we can be sure we're getting the right thing out. So the delegate method we want to implement is called, as under func add new person, add func image picker controller and we're going to go for did finish picking image or did finish picking media with info. Now, of the two, uh, this is the more common one because, of course, you can select videos and such. So select that one and press enter. What is my Xcode muffs it up by putting funk in twice. There we go. So this will be called when the user's finished selecting some sort of media with some info. And info is a dictionary containing NS object, then any object. So basically, absolutely anything at all. It's quite useless. We have to try and find our picture inside there. So the first thing we're going to do is declare a variable that can hold our image called new image and declare it as a UI image. It's a plain old UI image, not optional at all. Then we're going to try and unwrap conditionally and typecast our uh, edited image file. So we'll say if let possible image equals info UI image picker controller edited image. Then as question mark, we think it might be this thing, let us know. As UI image, oops, not lowercase m and UI image, of course. So this line of code means grab this key from this dictionary, check whether its value might be a UI image, and if it is, put it into possible image. Otherwise, we're gonna carry on. We're gonna have an else statement. Else, if let possible image equals info, UI, oops, quotes, UI image picker, controller, original image, 
just in case it's there. In quote square bracket, again, as question mark conditional typecast UI image. Then do stuff, else just return, get out, I've no idea what to do. In the first instance here, we just say, well, new image equals possible image. So this thing has successfully been unwrapped into here, assign it from there to here to our shared variable. And actually it's the same for the second if let, because we don't care which one works, as long as one of them works, we're happy. So at this point, we should have a valid image in the new image variable. It's now our job to save that back to disk with a unique file name. And the easiest way to make a unique file name is using a special class called NSUUID, a universally unique identifier, which sounds fantastic. It uses information about your computer plus the current time, highly accurate time, to generate a unique identifier. And we can use that for our file name. So we can say uh, let image name equals NSUUID, which turns an NSUUID object, which is sort of helpful, but not here. We're going to cast it to, uh, or sorry, use its property, UUID string. So get out a string version of its UUID. And then we're going to create a place to save this picture. So we'll say uh, let image path equals uh, a new method we'll come back to in just a moment called get documents directory dot string by appending path component image name like that now get documents directory is uh, a helper method I use in so many of my projects I'll show it to you here just briefly it just finds out where our documents directory is. So each application has a directory called documents where it can save files for users. And these get synced automatically with iCloud and with iTunes and stuff. So it's very, very helpful to have this documents directory. But it's private for your app, so you can save whatever you want there uh, and not worry about it. Finding it is annoying, so I tend to write this little three-line uh, method to make it all work for me. So func uh, get documents directory parentheses, open brace, and the code is let paths equals ns search path for directories and domains. Uh, the directory uh, should be dot document directory, and the domain mask uh, should be dot user domain mask. Expand tilde true, like that. Uh, and that will uh, find all the possible places where the documents directory might exist and let's face it, it's only ever one of them um, so we can actually say let documents directory equals paths zero and then return that for our method so let's put in here returns a string like that uh, it is whinging why are you whinging let's have a look oh it's, it's whinging because this could be an array of anything unhelpfully really to be typecast as string look at that great so this will return the location of the user's documents directory just copy and paste that from the sample code if you bought the project uh, or type it in by hand if you haven't um, and use it again and again and again it just finds the places where directories exist gets the first one and say that's documents directory. it just is there's only ever one of them let's face it so it doesn't really matter how it works the fact is it doesn't work that's get used here and it calls the string by appending path component method of the documents directory and that's the smart way to create file names so if this thing returns uh, user foo bar baz directory documents if that is what get documents directory returns and image name of course right now will be an NSUUID which is a big long sort of number like this sort of thing like that uh, string by appending path component takes these two, puts them together, and adds a separator like that. In this case, a forward slash. Of course, the forward slash might change at any day. Apple's uh, can do what they want, quite frankly. Um, but that's what it does, and it does it in a very safe way. So by using the method, it will adapt to any changes required in the future. So let's leave that line of code. So we, we get the image path. We know we're going to write this file. We know what the file is because it's here. 
we have to convert it to a writable format first. So we're going to say let JPEG data equals UI image JPEG representation of our new image file uh, uh, memory and give it a quality. I want to choose 80%. So good, but not great. So this ha has uh, an image. This converts the image to a JPEG in memory still. And finally, it's just down to us to write out the JPEG to disk. So we're going to say JPEG data, write to file, image path as defined here, atomically true. That means write it in one lump or write it in several lumps. I want it in one lump, one big go, so we can't have problems from reading and writing at the same time. Make that image path and it should work. Fantastic. So when the image picker did finish picking with media, i.e. we found a picture, make sure we pull it out, convert it to JPEG and save to disk. Finally, we want to dismiss the view controller. Get rid of it entirely because we're finished with it now. Should we lowercase true? Lowercase true, there we go. Dismiss the view controller and that finishes the method. With, with that done, you can go ahead and run the app, but it's not going to be very good because all we're doing is saying, yep, they finished picking something, uh, save to disk. And that's not enough, right? You have to do a bit more than that, um, including adding it to an array so you can show it. We're also going to add, uh, uh, just quickly, the other possible outcome, oops, the other possible outcome of our call here. Uh, complaining. Um, the other possible call for, for our method, which is uh, image picker controller did cancel. So user bailed out. Um, all we're going to say at this point is dismiss view controller. Uh, true, true, completion nil. You could add more code there saying, why did you cancel? Who knows what? But for now, we'll just hide the view controller. Next up, we need to make this do something interesting. We need to hold uh, data about users inside our app pictures and the, and the names uh, and we'll put that data into an array now before uh, when doing the petitions viewer we used a array of dictionaries where the dictionaries had, had, had dictionaries had keys like title and body and sigs for signatures uh, and that's okay that is okay it's a perfectly fine thing to do but there's a nicer safer way of doing it and more efficient quite frankly which is to create a custom class to do this work for you, to store things for you. Uh, and to do that, I'd like you to go up here and make a new file, right click on project 10 and choose new file. Then choose Cocoa Touch class. I have a subclass of enter NS object. That is what is called uh, the uh, universal base class for Objective C meaning that all uh, Objective C classes come from that NS object ultimately. Sometimes sometimes a very, very long way to get there and then inherit, 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 finally NS object. Um, for us, we want to come straight from NS object. Now, some more experienced coders with Swift might now be saying, no, don't do that. Use something else entirely, a struct. They're wrong uh, and they're going to find out later why they're wrong. But right now, they'll think they're right. So you go ahead and think you'll write all you want to, haters. Um, for now, choose subclass of NS object and give it a name. I'm going to call my class person. It's a great name for a class. Then press create. There we go. And in there, we want to store two things. Let's face it. We want to store a name and an image. So I'm going to write in here, uh, var name is string var image is string a complicated class but errors appear straight away even though it's like just four lines of actual code in our class you still get an error class person has no initializers now initializers are just special methods they're special method methods that create things and you've been seeing them all along you've seen how we can say uh, ns string contents of file and that creates an ns string it initializes it with the contents of a file. Uh, and that's an initializer. And Swift's telling us here that our class needs to have an initializer. Now, there is a, a rule in Swift, which is that object of type string cannot be empty. 
Now we've seen already that string exclamation mark and string question mark can be empty. They can both be nil, but string as we have it here cannot be nil. It must have a value all the time. And that's not just strings, that's any non-optional data type must have a value at all times. So we could, and you'll often see this, uh, give it an exclamation mark, meaning, ah, forget it, let, let, let it be nil, it's fine. We could instead give it a default value, quote, 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 like that. Also very common. But the nicest way to do this, and do all those, the nicest way is to bow to what Swift is asking for and make a custom initializer. This is really easy to do, it's just another method call, just without the word func before it. So we write init, parenthesis, name colon string, then image colon string. So we want to be told to create ourselves with a name and an image. Now Swift's still warning us because this thing has not been set. So it'll go through that code and say, well, has everything been set? Has everything got a value now that needs to have a value? No, error. So the fix that we must give these two things a value. But you'll see this variable is called name and this parameter is called name. This one's called image, this one's called image. So they have the same names. And this is another example where the self keyword is actually very important because even though these are perfectly valid names to parameters, we can't distinguish them. And so to distinguish them, we say self. So I want to set self.name, you know, my property called name, to be equal to that argument, that parameter, so name. And then self.image equals image. And it, it distinguishes correctly now between this property name and this parameter name here. That's what you want. Now back in viewcontroller.swift, uh, scroll to the top and we're going to uh, add to here an array of people. So write var people equals bracket person bracket parentheses. So array, i.e. square brackets, and of object type person. So we can now hold lots of people. So when we create a person, which happens when you import a picture from the image picker controller, we get to here and we want to uh, create a new person at this point. So we're going to say here, let person, oops, let person equals person, capital let P, parenthesis, then name, we'll call it unknown, oops, unknown, and image, we'll call it image name, the name of the image we're working with, which is set here. Perfect. So when that's happened, when that works now, it will add uh, or create sorry an object for person using default parameters unknown name with the image name being taken from the uh, camera or the image library. We now need to reload the um, collection view and also add the thing to our array so we can read from there again. So we'll say uh, people dot add or pen sorry. Uh, person, person, then collection view dot reload data, like that. So let's go ahead and uh, add a thing. Yeah, that's much better. That is so much better. There's obviously a problem somewhere. Question is, where is the problem? How do we fix it? Well, the problem occurs because um, we aren't actually using the people array anywhere. You know, we create it up here, here, and we are adding things to it and then calling reload data, but nowhere have we said the collection view must use the people array to show its things. We just typed in number of item section 10, like a random number, right? That needs to be not 10, but people.count return as many items as there are people unsurprisingly and here we create we create a cell so we can see the white and black thing going on um, but we're not doing anything with it so we need to modify that so it, it correctly loads the right picture in there now loading the picture 
takes a few steps. Firstly, we need to pull the right person out from the people array. Good. Then set the name label to the person's name. Good. Then create a new UI image from the person's file name, the image name, uh, using get documents directory again. So we have a full path to the image. And we're also going to use this opportunity to make the thing look a little bit nicer, as you'll see shortly. So just after let cell equals, write this. Let person equals people bracket index path dot item. Path dot item, like that. Not row anymore, it's item, because there are no rows. Then we can start assigning things. We're going to say, well, uh, this cell's names text, name text, is equal to the person's name. Fantastic. Then we want to try and find the full path to its picture. So we'll say, uh, let, oops, let path equals get documents directory dot string by appending path component person dot image. Like that. Next up, we're going to just make it look a little bit nicer by giving a border color to our image view and a slight bit of rounded corner effect. So after that let path here, we're going to first put that picture into the image view. So cell dot, uh, cell dot image view dot image equals UI image named, oops, UI image at lowercase m, silly me, image named uh, the um, path like that. That will load it up. In fact, no, wait a minute, we can't do that. We can't do that, sorry, my mistake. That's what we would have done before. UI image, image name is what we've been using so far. And what it does is uh, it finds this named file inside your app bundle and loads it in and does some caching in the background, but it loads it in from your app bundle. These pictures are not inside our app bundle. They're separate to our app bundle because the users created them while they're running the app. So we can't use UI image, image named. We need a different method. And actually, the one to use is uh, UI image contents of file. There we go. Path. That means here is the complete path to a picture somewhere in the file system, not inside my uh, bundle. Uh, please go ahead and load it inside the image. So let's make it look better as well. We're going to say to the image view, cell dot image view dot layer, the CA layer beneath it, dot border color. You've done this before, I'm sure. Equals UI color. Uh, we'll use red 0, green 0, blue 0, alpha 0.3. So a very faint, thin line, uh, thin blackish line around the pictures. Beneath that, we'll say cell.imageview.layer.borderwidth equals 2. Border width equals 2. To make the line a bit thicker and more obvious on the screen, then we'll say uh, cell.imageview.layer dot border uh, sorry dot corner radius equals three corner radius lets uh views be rounded on their edges so we're going to make this thing have a very small rounded corners effect we're also going to attach that same rounded corner effect the cells layer so cell dot layer dot corner radius equals seven now this is so that it's, it curves more on the outside than it does on the inside and these two numbers match up pretty well visually so they can they curve the same amount uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, run this. It's erroring because presumably I'm going to have a, have a bit of a punt here because I've modified the CA layer and uh, I'm using UI color. The red herring extra argument green and cool is just completely wrong. I just want to do .cg color at the end. There we go. That was it. And Swift does have some pretty terrible error messages. But that's okay. I'm sure it'll get better over time. Um, so go ahead and... Uh, run that now and it should look a bit better there we go so there's nothing in now which is what we want uh, we can add a thing add that picture use and there it is little stroke around it a uh, picture in there with rounded corners and such it's looking a lot better um, you could do a bit more to this uh, if you want to you could modify the way it looks and works a bit more um, but realistically it's it's perfectly fine um, we should probably actually go to the storyboard and select the image view and enable clip subviews. Let's see if that makes it a bit nicer again. 
Uh, add a picture. Add the same one. Yeah, that one. Use that one. There we go. That's, just, that's even nicer. So I'll zoom in nice and close. You can see it. That looks. That looks really okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Okay, so that is our um, I had to say to say it for trademark reasons. Our Polaroid uh, effect of our uh, collection view. The next thing to do is when you just tap on one of these things, we want to ask them to provide a name for the person, or in this case, waterfall, that they can see in the picture. So we did this before in project five. We used the UI alert controller uh, and then called add text field with configuration handler. I know it's quite wordy. Um, it, this is pretty much the same code here. Um, we did a cancel button this time though. We didn't have that one last time because it's just submit an answer. But a cancel button this time needs to be there, otherwise, you know, they might say, "Oh, actually, I don't want to rename this person." Um, and when the um, person taps "Change" or "Continue" or well, "OK," whatever you choose your title, it should change the name of the person that was chosen. Then reload the collection view to reflect the change. So to do that, we want to add a new method using co-completion. We want to say "Collection View" and look for "Did select item at path." one of the things have been tapped. So first we want to pull out the person that was tapped. So we're going to do let person equals people index path dot item. Like that. Then create a new UI alert controller. So let AC equals UI alert controller with the title of rename person and a message of nil, no message. Preferred style alert, so we can put a text view in there. And we'll say ac dot add text field with configuration handler just nil again it's perfectly fine. Then let's add some actions with ac oops ac dot add action ui alert action. This first one uh, is going to be a title. Let's say cancel. Uh, the the star should be dot cancel to cancel button and handler nil i.e. just dismiss the alert controller. The second one should be ac add action ui alert action title ok style default handler we want a trailing closure so delete all that stuff delete 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 uh, this is just like we did before with the uh, um, anagrams game open uh, close the method with a parenthesis then open brace do unowned self comma ac then we don't care which action was tapped only one of them so underscore in then uh, uh close the brace afterwards and in between these two we want to um do something interesting clearly we want to, to modify the person's name so for the code we want to say let new name equals ac dot text fields unwrap it forcefully bracket zero as ui text field then person dot name whoops name equals new name dot text update the person's name then self dot collection view dot reload data it needs to be self of course because um, we are inside a closure here so it's unknown self and then self in here uh, at, when that finishes we need to, to end the the method call here add action like that and finally we'll call present view controller ac animate the true true completion nil that makes it show a text field rename it then reload the table so I'll press play now and see how it looks add a thing choose uh, that lovely waterfall great tap on it it'll say who should be called I'm gonna say waterfall and press OK and you see boom pops in waterfall you can tap and rename it again, of course. So that is our project finished, which wasn't too hard, I think. You've learned all about UI collection view, which is just like UI table view, except as you can see, uh, it can handle lots of things. So I can go ahead and add some more in here, uh, or some even more. It, it's a table view, it's a grid rather than a table, essentially. Otherwise, behind the scenes, it looks and works very, very similarly. It's now down to you to customize this to work uh, however you want to, to make it look more like what you want for your project. For example, you might say, uh, I really want imagery to have a very large uh, corner radius, for example, like that. Press press play again, see how it looks. 
Uh, let's have a look. Moments that one use. Yeah, look at that. Even more rounded. Not quite so nice, but you know, it's it's your project. It's down to you to make this look and work as you want. You've learned all about UI collection view. You've learned lots about UI image picker controller. You've met NSU UID and you made a custom class. You've learned lots in this. Plus, you've done some more UI alert controller work and a bit more storyboarding too. This has been another great project. Please go ahead and fiddle with it some more. Uh, for more information, go to our website, hackingwithswift.com, where you can buy this as a book with lots more explanation inside it for just $3. Come on, just $3. Or buy his high-resolution video. It all helps support my work. Alternatively, follow me on Twitter. I am at Two Straws. Get in touch. I'll do my best to help you. Have fun.